Hello, this is Simon Knott and I'm at the National Horse Racing Museum in Newmarket. That on your left is what remains of King Charles II's palace. Everything about this place is historic. It's a working museum, interactive, family friendly, and it even re-homes re and retrains racehorses you, which you can meet. Um, absolutely spectacular. As you can see, loads of artifacts and artwork, memorabilia. Um, it's a tremendous place. Without further ado, come and visit it and uh, and meet the people that run it. Hello and welcome to the National Horse Racing Museum at Newmarket. My name's Sal Fletcher, I'm the curator here and this is my director, Anne-Marie Hogan. Hello and welcome. So Anne-Marie, what do you think is the best thing about this museum here in Newmarket? Well, this piece in particular, not that I would like to clean it, but <laughs> I think that is rather a special candelabrum and it is in um, memorial to Sir Admiral Rouse, who has a great story to tell. Yes, Sir Admiral Rouse is incredibly important to the town. He served the Jockey Club for 25 years, and this candelabrum was given to him as a gift in recognition of his service. He's a really interesting character. You can find places named after him. We've got a Rouse Road right, right round the corner, haven't we? Yeah. Um, and he actually developed the handicapping and weight system for horse racing. So he's really important in the history of racing. And we have a plethora of other fascinating objects to do with the social history of racing and also the science of thoroughbred racing, which we'll be able to see in just a minute. In particular, though, this one is a really interesting man because he was in the Navy for some 21 years. Like um, and got himself into trouble in his ship in the Atlantic, yeah. um, sailed it home, saved all his men. He, as immediately he stepped off his ship, he was court-martialed for having destroying naval property. Yeah, he'd lost his rudder. He'd lost his rudder. He's tut tut, yeah. So a really extraordinary character, and it's great to have things that commemorate his contribution here in the museum. And not only that, but the handicap system that he did set up is still in use today. Hello, we promised you a look at our science galleries and here we are sat in front of the skeleton of Hyperion. Anne-Marie is going to say a few words about him. So Hi Hyperion, who has stood here beside us, was only a small horse at standing at 15 hands high, but he was smart enough to be able to win the Derby and the St. Ledger in 1933 for his owner, the, Hon the Honourable George Lampton. Um, as you can see, he is extremely well preserved and is sort of in this science gallery which tells you all about the anatomy of the horse. So if we just move across here, I think it's totally fascinating, Sal, that the actual horse stands on his middle finger. Yeah, it's incredible really. It, I mean, evolution of mammals, the horses ended up with our forearm bones here. You can see we've colour coded it so you can kind of understand how it all works. So here's our forearm, it's right up here on a horse, and then what I think of as being like sort of the main, one of the main bones in the leg is equivalent on a human, is actually a finger bone. So that's incredible to think of this really key bone in a horse is, is the equivalent of a finger on a human. Um, and then you can see as it runs down the, um, the posh word for these is phalanges, but it's fingers. As it runs down these bones here, you can see the equivalent here on the horse, which is, it's staggering to think um, how much is riding, excuse the pun, uh, on, on quite a fragile set of bones in a way. And it, you begin to appreciate just how important um, welfare and care uh, and the health of the horse is because Completely. there is so much just invested in this one set of bones. I mean, if you think they are literally walking on their middle fingers, you have got over half a ton of horse flesh walking on four fingers. Not just walking, galloping, galloping and jumping. Absolutely. So the amount of pressure going through those bones is immense. Yeah, I mean, this really is some machine. If you ever have um, the great opportunity to come to Newmarket, you can actually see a sculpture of Hyperion on the high street outside the Jockey Club rooms. It's done by a famous sculptor whose name was uh, John Skeeping, uh, and he used this very skeleton 
to be able to put together his sculpture, um, which I think is a lovely link between the museum and the rest of the town. Fascinating. So here at the National Horse Racing Museum, we always say we are so much more than a museum. And part of our site is actually the historic palace belonging to King Charles II. Uh, it was built here in 1671. And so we've just celebrated its 350th birthday last year, haven't we? We did. We had a great party here. We had some reenactors here. We had musket firing. We had um, archery, archery, dancing, music. The whole thing. We had this, the sight, sounds and smells of Georgian history. Indeed we did. So, um, in celebration of this wonderful palace, we still had to find something to do with it when we moved to the site here in 2016. And we now use it to hold our art collections. And there is a fantastic array of paintings uh, themed around sporting art. We're the home of the British Sporting Art Trust and their collection is here too. And you can literally walk through time as you go through these rooms, looking at paintings over the last 300 years or so of sporting history in the UK. When it gets when it gets to number five, right? Just stay like this position there, okay? When it gets to number five, lower your knee okay. and lower your bum more. That's it. See what I mean? How long do you think I'm going to keep you that position? Put your bum in the air first, right? Put your bum in the air a bit, good. Do it like that. When we get to five, like I said, if you're on your knee, you can get get down farther. You know? Okay. Are you ready? Are you filming? Excellent. Keep looking over the top, Shiver, keep breathing. See where I'm going. Don't hold your breath. Okay, now Frank Conlon yeah. works the uh, the simulator, which I'm far too uh, scared to go on. Frank, I've here you've got a, a bit of a history in horse racing. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes, I was, I was basically born in Cannock, Cannock Chase, and um, went to Ireland at 13 to learn how to ride. And um, father was an Irish jockey, but died sadly when I was eight. He was only 30, died in another hospital of appendicitis. But mother was English, and when I was 13, we had a letter, they wanted me to go to Ireland to learn how to ride. Where they knew my uncle, they knew my father, and I had other uncles that had rode winners, you know. And sadly, they've all gone now. Come back, come back to England when I was 15, I could leave school. Served my apprenticeship with Bob Ward, who got banned for life in 1960 for, for being naughty, stopping horses. And uh, when he'd gone, but basically in 1968 I come to Newmarket and work up with Cardberg uh, as a groom basically and a work ride for Michael Jarvis who I think was a great trainer, absolutely brilliant, so, uh, sadly passed away as well. Um, he was a salary, tra a salary trainer for David Robinson, television millionaire, you know, the DER Robinson Rentals. Um, 
then to Van Cutsen. I was lucky enough to ride the Great Park Top just just for a week while I grew Maureen was our holiday. And won the King George with Leicester Honour and what have you, really good. And then started with Henry Cecil in about 71. I was with him for, I should say, about 14, 15 years. Uh, Travelling, travelling, groom, work rider. And, and after, after the 15 or 16 years, Michael Stout asked me to go and be his head lad work rider. So I had seven years with, with Michael, rode a lot of his good horses, the same as Henry's, including Sharastani, the Derby winner, Sher Nazar, Slip Anchor, Shadari, uh, Crebensis, the jumper, won the champion hurdle. That's the only jumper he had in the yard, you know, just one, shape Marvin only. And the other two good horses, Zilzal and uh, Adstow, brilliant horses. And then basically Henry asked me to go back to him, same job, headman work rider, and I was lucky enough to ride a lot of his good horses. Ard Ross, Le Moss, Commander in Chief, Boz the Sham, Oso Sharp, Slip Anchor, you know, many others. Ram Rumor and the, all the trip of the English, Irish, Yorkshire Oak, second in the ledger. So the nice feelings like that, but get passed by and nobody seems to remember them, you know. But I was lucky. I was in a job that I loved, and doing what I wanted to do. I had all the accidents, broke everything, nose, jaw, ribs, collarbone, wrist, three vertebrae, left ankle, but I was playing football, which I was no good at, you know. And then after I'd retired when I was 67, I was asked to go to the British Racing School to teach the apprentices. Didn't know whether I'd like it, but I did. I had seven years there, you know, lucky enough to be with, with some good jockeys that made it. Obviously, there's a lot that didn't, but the ones that I was with when they did there was for, for a while, Buick, O.C. Murphy, who was having a bad run at the moment, Tom Marquan, and Andrea Lazzini, Josephine Gordon, Jack Garrity, and lots and lots, Rob Tart, people that did. People had a few rides but never carried on, you know. But they, basically, they, uh, they've all tried the best and they did the best. I enjoyed teaching them. When, when I retired from there, I was asked to come and help out with the museum, mechanical law, and I'm having just as much fun doing this. I love meeting the people and helping the children. They, they have a lot of school trips here, you know, the little kids, either six and seven year old, 11 and 12 year olds, and it's, it's a great pleasure to watch the little faces when they climb on this, you know, and cheer each other. And I, and I hope I carry on doing it. I hope I carry on doing this until I'm 40. <laughs> <laughs> can probably do this easiest so if they've got um, a problem with the horse's hoof um, then if perhaps the soft part of the horse's hoof needs a little bit of support so some of them have got have got a full circle this one here is not a racehorse <laughs> all right this is a shire but they still need horses so this is Tilly, she is a five year old filly um, she's been with us for just over a month now um, and she has actually found her new home. Um, while she's been here she's been lunged, she's gone over poles and she's been ridden and she's been an absolute superstar to um, retrain and her new owner is going to do some hacking, some low level competition and then work up from there. So they're here for three to four months to be retrained and we have a lovely arena around the back and we do as much as we can within that arena setting and we have the public which we can show and demonstrate with these horses um, what happens to race horses when they get retrained. So finally we're here in the Rothschild Yard, we've shown you trainers house, we've taken you across to the art gallery in Palace House, the Packard Galleries. Here in the Rothschild Yard we showcase the retraining of race horses um, and you've just met Lily and Tilly.
Lily and Tilly. Um, and we'd really like to welcome you here. We're open from Tuesday to Sunday, 10 till five in the summer hours, 10 till four winter hours. And please come along. There's plenty to see and do, lots for families, and we'd love to meet you all. We'd love to welcome you to Newmarket.